The line has been following New Mexico Attorney General Hector Baldaris' investigation into allegations of possible misuse of public funds and other abuses at UNM since May of last year. The issues range from financial improprieties like private donor expenses covered with public money to how UNM handles cases of retaliation against those who report sexual misconduct. Now, this week, Mr. Baldera sent a letter to UNM, UNM's President Garnett Stokes in the university regents as well, citing a lack of transparency and threatening legal action if UNM does not demonstrate better cooperation. Here to jump into this topic are Michael Bird. He's a public health consultant and past president of the American Public Health Association. Laura sanchez Reve, she's with us, an attorney at Cuddy and McCarthy LLP. Former state senator Dee Dee Feldman is with us. And former New Mexico House Minority, minority Whip Daniel Foley is here as well. Now, welcome to all of you. Dan, in the letter, Mr. Balderas writes that his office has, quote, encountered numerous deficiencies, omissions, and delays in our requests for documents and apparent misrepresentations. UNM, meanwhile, is countered by saying they have provided a ton of stuff. Let me go back to those, those last two words there in that quote. Um, the idea that there could be improprieties that the attorney general is laying out there. Do you sense something deeper here than we've known about for a while here? Do you yeah, have the been, feeling that there's something going this. on? Yeah, we've been talking yeah. about this for a long time. It's an absolute, complete lack of leadership. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just don't know who thinks it's a good idea to ignore the attorney general. Just their comments when he says, you haven't given me the information I've asked. Right. And their response is, well, we gave you a ton. <laughs> right? Well, right. that's not what I'm asking for. And I think there's nothing more scathing than the attorney general saying, I asked you for some stuff. Mm -hmm. You didn't give it to me, but I went over there and they had it and I know you got it. Right. So now, go ahead and touch on that. That's, you're talking about emails specifically. Yes, yeah, so there's some email yes, stuff specifically right. that mm -hmm. he had asked for that yes. apparently they had kind of scrubbed before they sent him. They being UNM. The right. University of New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when he did a little more deep digging, apparently someone else had those emails and he was able to compare those and say, we're, we're missing stuff right. here. That's right. Um, and so I think, you know, mm -hmm. as I've said from the very start, um, this clearly, you know, we were hoping with a new president, with a new athletic director, that things would change. Um, I'm not saying they're not and won't with a new president and new athletic director, mm -hmm. but I think this clearly points to systemic problem with the Board of Regents at the University of New Mexico. Mm -hmm. I think it clearly points to that regardless of who's at the helm, whether it's Dr. Frank, whether it's the new president, um, what, no matter who it is, that there seems to be some direction being given because the only constant in this is the Board of Regents. Mm. And somebody's gonna have to call them the task. And listen, it's, you know, I don't wanna say it's tough for me to say this. Mm -hmm. I'm a Republican. There's no doubt that I've supported Republicans. It's a heavy Republican, uh, it's a Republican administration with a heavy Republican tilt on that board. But right is right. Mm -hmm. Accountability is accountability. Mm -hmm. And when you have the Attorney General coming in and doing this stuff, mm -hmm. and you're not smart enough to get out in front of it, this is going to be a problem that I think could cost you and M for a long time. Mm -hmm. Again, same two words, apparent misrepresentations, Laura sanchez Reve. That, that's another layer here that we hadn't had before. What's your sense of it as you, as you read Mr. Balderas' statement? Well, I think it's clear that I mean, if, he, if he gets to the point where he has to actually go public with this information, I mean, ideally, mm -hmm from you know a law enforcement agency like that you're you're trying to get as much as you can and review the stuff um, you know as quickly as possible privately working with the university to get everything but once it becomes clear that they're not working in good faith mm. his next step is to go public with it and right. i think that that's um that's unfortunate and that signals i think i agree with dan that there's there's a bigger systemic problem there mm -hmm. um and i do think you know garnett stokes is new i think we're all hopeful that things will turn around under her watch mm -hmm. um but I, I don't think that the comment that we've given you a lot already is is adequate <laughs> right. i mean really right. that's just not that's, that's a very misstep. specific question i've answered plenty of questions yeah, i'm already. giving you i mean that's <laughs> It just right. doesn't work, and it doesn't hold muster in any court um, yeah, or in any kind of too. litigation to yeah. say, well, you know, I didn't give you what you wanted, but I give you a lot of other stuff. <laughs> right. That just doesn't right. work. So. Redacted. You know, right. Yeah. You know, the UNM president came in March 1st, Garnet Stokes. Uh, Dr. Stokes walked into quite the hornet's nest here. But I'm curious, in, in, in the, uh, Laura makes an interesting point here about there are steps to these things. And I'm wondering, Dee, if you feel like perhaps Ms. Stokes uh, was owed a, a phone call for Mr. Balderas before this public pronunciation. Do you see what I'm saying here? She's new, she's just getting her feet wet. Was there something here that I might have missed it as I'm thinking about it? I don't know whether yeah. there was a phone call or not. There could mm -hmm. have been, mm -hmm. um, but it, she's, I guess she's well beyond the grace period at this point. It looked hopeful when she was sort of taking responsibility for mm -hmm. the athletic department, which is the source of a lot of these complaints. Right. 
Um, and you wonder if, if she isn't just sort of caught holding the bag for the previous administrations. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think, you know, the regents are the ones that are creating this kind of culture of mm -hmm. secrecy. And uh, they need to be accountable. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they're not accountable, they need to be replaced. I mean, they're having a similar problem at NMSU. Uh, where the faculty is beginning to really revolt against the regents. And we've seen that happen with UNM regents in the past, too. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when, when the tuition is being raised, uh, it does really seem a serious public uh, concern because this is taxpayer money and it's being wasted, and then the regents are not accountable mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. We have a statement from uh, Rob Dowdy about this, Michael, but uh, the other part of Mr. Balderas' letter, which is interesting, is also condemns what he calls UNM's, quote, failure to disclose instances of internal misconduct to all proper authorities. And this has to do with, the, again, the sports programs, and there was a lot of allegations out there, and it looks like Mr. Balderas is finding out that the internal systems at UNM are not quite up to snuff for these kind of things. Again, same question from Dan. Are we finding out this a lo lot deeper than we originally realized, or what's your sense of it as you see this as well? I guess two things I would say. Mm -hmm. One is it is a systemic problem, clearly, and, and longstanding. Uh, second point I would make is that um, when you find you're in a hole, the, fest the best thing to do is quit digging. Um, and I think that uh, uh, the Board of Regents needs to, needs to recognize and acknowledge where they stand and uh, quit digging mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and start doing something constructive. Mm -hmm. um, this, you know, this is, it reflects badly on the university. It reflects badly on New Mexico. And if I had a, a child and was looking at where they would go to school, yeah. I would not be looking at UNM. And, and it's not just because I graduated from Cal and the University of Utah, but because they have such deep bedded internal problems that one would really have to say, well, why would I want to put my child and invest my, my dollars in this institution mm -hmm. when it has such a, 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 a questionable record? Mm -hmm. you, could, you wouldn't be alone. I bet there's a lot of other parents out there thinking the same thing. Laura, quick question here about the, the the legalities of certain things. Another thing the AG had an issue with was the university's practice of using private counsel instead of appropriate independent agencies for conflict-free resolution type things. Mm -hmm. Your sense of that, using private counsel, mm -hmm. is it a roadblock for everyone concerned? Is it the best way for the university to, to protect itself? Or what's your sense of, of that? Well, angle? I mean, it's not unusual for an entity, a public entity, to use outside counsel. Not all, not all public entities have um, this specific expertise within their general counsel's office to be able to use in-house counsel. So mm -hmm. that part of it is not unusual. I think what's troubling about the specific um, issue that was brought up here is that they used a private firm to investigate, uh, I think, the issue of fetal tissue right. um, and research along those lines. Um, and uh, one, that it was not something that was publicly bid. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms mm -hmm. of the procurement code, it, it, fell, it fell below the levels of where you need to bid, but at the same time, you know, it raises issues. We're like, why are you going with this particular firm? Mm -hmm. That's always a question. I don't think they did anything illegal by, by um, hiring an outside firm. But right. the, the bigger concern, mm -hmm. I think, is that they also didn't produce anything. There was no report. No follow-up. There, was nothing, up, there really. was nothing clear that came out of that $43,000 that was spent on whatever research was done or whatever wow. legal work was done by the firm. And I think that's, that certainly raises red flags. And I think it's reasonable okay. for the attorney general or the, the state auditor, for that matter, to mm -hmm. ask questions about, about that kind of arrangement. And I, I think the point, you know, I think the, the, you know, we, we hear this all the time, right? <clears throat> is, is it legal or is it right? Mm -hmm. And I think that there's clearly some legal issues with what's happening at UNM, but there's a lot of it's not right what's happening at UNM. And I think that UNM is, you know, we, we've heard this term before with President Bush and too big to fail. Has UNM become too big to fail? Right? Yeah. UNM, Good question. It kind of yeah. seems like UNM has mm -hmm. built this, this reputation, at least when I was in the legislature, it's sort of built this reputation that, you know, 
we're UNM and we do what we want. Right. And I think that they're they're just getting out on the fringes. And I think, again, it comes back to the Board of Regents. I mean, you know, they need to stop getting in damage control, which is what they seem to be in all the time, mm -hmm. and start getting in a leadership role mm -hmm. and say, look, we, we, we've got some mistakes, we're going to make it. I think there's a difference when you compare New Mexico State to UNM to the extent that, you know, you're having faculty upset. I think there's always consternation between the regents and, sure. and the administration and faculty. <clears throat> I think when you have the attorney general, when you have the state auditor, when you have the news media, when you have people resigning, when you have people leaving, when you have people, I mean, just on the, in the paper the other day, which w isn't, isn't even being talked about, you have a coach who stole like $60,000 and they Allegedly. Just, yeah, allegedly, yeah. thank you. <laughs> they who allegedly took $60,000 and they just kind of yeah. stopped the investigation and said, well, you go on somewhere else and we'll right. go do our thing. wasn't very known in the public. And, right, either, and so you're it? like, yeah. who makes these decisions? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I think that, you know, uh, to, to Mike's point, at the end of the day, you know, and none of this stuff has happened in a vacuum, right? If it has, one of the things that I think the reason why I'm putting so much blame on the Board of Regents mm -hmm. is there's some continuity in a Board of Regents, regardless mm -hmm. of who the governor is, mm -hmm. right? You bring on the it's new people, the you right. bring in the new people, there's some people that hang over That's for right. a couple of years, That's right. there's the transition. You know, by the time you served eight years, you got all of your people on there, but they all didn't come on day one. That's right. So That's there's right. no, it's not like no you lose institutional no. knowledge, That's right? right. That's and, right. And I just think that at some point, I think there's this, you know, <clears> the old, you know, you always hear the talk about the, the binder that the president has about the aliens and the assassinations. I think UNM has one, and the regents just kind of hand it amongst each other. Hey, welcome aboard. Here's the binder. These are the things we do not speak about. Right. We'll see what happens there. We'll be sure to follow up on this story in any legal action, any legal action that might take place. Now, now, when we come back to the line, we'll debate a federal judge's decision to toss out a lawsuit over drilling in the Chaco area.